What's up? This is Karen Civil, and you are on air with Dimples. Hi, Karen. Hi. Welcome to Dimples Radio. Pleasure Thank you so to have much you. for having me. Of course. Pleasure to have you here visiting with us at Dash, you know. And I also haven't seen you in like forever, so. Yes, sure. it's it's been a minute. I think it was the Cortez event a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yes. There we go. All about the sneakers. What yes. up? Um, okay. Anyway, so I was really excited to get you in here. One, because in in agreeing to do the show with Dash, it was about changing the course of conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to have more talks with not necessarily with artists, but with people who are responsible. Mm-hmm. And then also I wanted to talk about like the real stuff. I feel like we talk so often about like things that aren't permanent. Yes. And I would like to talk about things that things actually with substance. Make... Thank you. you okay. Know. I said ha- it, she didn't. Hashtag <laughs> more substance 2017. Um, well, I don't know if that's a real hashtag. So no, well, I should hashtag use that. Every day. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, so, like, the big thing that's going on now, and I know you've been paying attention to it, mm-hmm. is um, I want to say it's, like, a lack of response to hurricanes. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, we have the Hurricane Harvey thing where they didn't tell people in Houston to evacuate mm-hmm. until, like, 12 hours before it made landfall. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, now as we're preparing for Hurricane Irma, we're just like, oh, yeah, you guys might want to leave, but, you know. No, well, <laughs> I will say they are definitely handling it different with Hurricane Omer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're talking to an island girl right here. Mm-hmm. You know, my family coming from Haiti, Jersey, we have like a hurricane, a thunderstorm, a snowstorm. We have something like every three years. Yeah. So we're kind of like, I'm kind of like immune to this at this point. Yeah. But I don't feel like Harvey was handled correctly. Correct. And um, with Irma, I definitely feel like the state of Florida is taking a, a bit more responsibility. You know, they're evacuating their t- people, telling people to stay home. Flights are canceled. A lot of things are happening, even with just um, the Caribbean itself. I was supposed to actually be in Haiti next week, and they already sent out emails. School is out. Certain things are just, they're taking precautions because of what just what we just saw, the lack of responsibility and the lack of proper planning in Harvey. Mm-hmm. I feel like with with Irma, they are trying to, you know, bring in the casualties or whatever the damages that might happen and just 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 making more cautious no i so i definitely 100 percent agree um i feel like i feel i don't, I don't want to be like trump dropped the ball with texas but like i feel like there were just so many people who could have like helped avoid the amount of casualties we did have i think it was definitely handled it was it was just improper planning and even with just it, it, just a lot of things that I that I saw, and it's it's just like you know I don't I don't want to be the person that complains. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, it happened. You know, I was reading something. It was just like they don't even have someone in charge of FEMA. I'm not even. Sure. There's no there's no director of FEMA right yeah. now. And it's and it's 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 just mind boggling to me because and then he's he, it's like Trump then goes down on the ground. His wife's in her her five inch stilettos. I understand she was a model before, and this is her way of life. You know, people were making excuses for her. And I'm like, give me a break. If 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 um, our former Mrs. President, Miss President, wore six hundred dollars sneakers shirts. or like sleeveless shirts, it was an issue. But she's wearing stilettos in the middle of a flood, you know. And then he goes to he goes to a place where it's just housing people, and he's like, oh, this is a great turnout. What do you? This is not a turnout for you. This is they have no homes. Exactly. You know, and like I just they ain't got nowhere else to go. It's 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 a very unfortunate situation. But more than anything, I applaud how us. Our community, it's it didn't it wasn't a black or white thing. It was just an American thing. We came together to help each other. Right. Like you saw entertainers, everyday people, like companies like Amazon, UPS, FedEx coming together to help one another. And that's what it's really about, Mm -hmm. because we have somebody who's tearing us apart at the foundation. And then we were like, you know what? We understand where the rudest problems coming from. We're going to come together. We're going to fix our own issues. Mm -hmm. And that's what I just applaud of applaud us all as Americans coming together to help one another. I definitely 100% agree with you, but just even like touching on Amazon or like people who've come together, you look at somebody like J.J. Watt, who's raised over $10 million, Mm -hmm. and he's giving it directly to people who need to rebuild their homes. Mm -hmm. But then when we speak about like the city of Houston, Houston floods after a normal rainfall, Mm -hmm. and they've been given tax dollars over years to fix it, and they just never did. So there was definitely drop balls there. Yes. But um, I'm glad like we as people, as a community, are picking up the slack. And, and, and that's, to me, that's what it's really, that's really, it's really all what, about. But my whole thing is, like, why does it take a tragedy for us, like, to But that's get usually, it? that's usually what happens. Yeah. You know, that's usually when we, 
when we realize the importance of something, you know, is something has to happen to us for us to, to you have to be greatly affected by something to then want to create some sort of change. Mm-hmm. Usually, no, you not use, you know, examples of, um, what is it like when, when a child goes missing? Oh, like you like the Amber Alert? Yeah, like Amber Alert. Mm-hmm. Things like that. When all of those little things, well, not little, when those things coming to play, it's because something had to happen. Mm-hmm. You know how we set up the, uh, the missing alert for children, even how like John Walsh started America's Most Wanted is because yeah, his son yeah, went yeah. missing. So it's just, we have to be directly affected by a tragedy but and whole, also to affect that change. So I 100% agree with you, but why does it, why is it different? I know why it's different, but mm-hmm. I'm asking, I'm, I'm asking this in a particular way for a reason. Mm-hmm. Why is it different when black people are being killed? Do you ever say like, cause like you look at something like, Alton Sterling, which we all witnessed on Facebook Live, Mm -hmm. right? And they're like, oh, my God, this is so wrong. Everybody's so wrong. And we rally around it. And a week later, people are like, nah, I guess we're okay. It doesn't really affect me. You know, people kind of just say that's like selective rage okay, um, or selective outcries. Like, this is, you know, this is the thing for the moment. Mm -hmm. Because we consume so much information from our news comes everywhere. Before, to get the news, we'd have to wait till 10 o'clock news. For sure. Now we wake up and it's, and it's on it's Twitter. Out of, yeah, it's at our fingertips. I don't, I don't necessarily need to read the newspaper. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at Twitter. I can go to Facebook has a little link. Yeah, Everywhere yeah, you yeah. go, there's somewhere to read the news. So so much information is consumed and taken in, and I'm not making an excuse, but it does catch that selective, you know, that selective outcry rage. Or this is this is what I want to rally around mm-hmm. for the moment. Yeah, you know, you definitely want to continue to create change. There's the people that's been fighting for our rights and for certain things for a very long time. That's why there's always going to be the Martin Luther Kings because he he used his life mm-hmm. to fight for us, you know, and then there's people who's just doing it for the moment. And do, you, it, do you think we have a Martin Luther King of our generation? No, Martin Luther King is always going to be a Martin Luther King. There's We're always going to have somebody new for that certain generation, people who who's speaking against, mm-hmm. you know, things that are happening towards us, but, you know, he set that tone. You right. know, we had a Martin Luther King, we had a Barack Obama, who's next? So it's just... There's never going to be one exactly like that. Right. No, I hear that. Mm-hmm. I feel like if we're talking about next generation, yeah, we still have Barack. We have Michelle. And I feel like here in California, we have Kamala Harris, mm-hmm. who's like our state. What is she, a senator? Um, Don't quote me. I'm not 100% sure. But she's in the legislative aspect mm-hmm. uh, for California. And I think she's doing her thing, which is really, really dope. Um, But simply just touching on... I know we're talking about like the tragedies and things that happen within and around our communities. I know one thing that you do is that with your Live Civil Foundation, you give back to Haiti. Mm -hmm. And I know you've talked about it in the past, but why was that such a big deal for you? Considering like you're Haitian, you grew up in a Haitian family, Mm -hmm. um, but why was going back to actual Haiti and giving back such a big, important deal? Um, You know, I just wanted to give back to the country that that has given me so much, which is my parents. Mm -hmm. And they laid the foundation of hard work. And just uh, just removing the stigma of just of, of everything that people thinks about Haiti, and I wanted to give the kids there the same opportunities that I have in America, of a great education, you know, the power of play, um, the tools for you know for technology and things like that. So I definitely started in Haiti, mm-hmm. but I didn't want people to think, oh, she only cares about her people. I care about you know. Um, but what's the wrong next... with only caring about your people, though? No, but it's it's, like... it's 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 like for me more more than anything, I just care about the next generation. For sure. I just want to make sure that they have the tools to unlock, you know, their potential. Mm-hmm. So I definitely started in Haiti because that's where my parents are from, mm-hmm. and I just did something. Um, I just just I have an event in Brooklyn. I do there. I just did something in Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So I'm continuing to have it grow, but I definitely started the foundation for me was in in Haiti because I want it to be cool the same way we go to, you know, people go to Jamaica, Aruba, whatever. I find time on my time off, I go to Haiti. And it's it's beautiful. It's, it's, It's one of the most, they have some of the most beautiful beaches. We have a great time. And, um, I get to, I get to help kids who, who are just like me. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It's not just, you know, for the moment, I never want to catch myself going just for the holidays or for whatever. I was just going just to go, just to go. you know, in, in September because I just, I wanted, I wanted to have a yoga class. I mean, I feel like, yeah. that's, I feel like it's good to go back though. Yeah. Like, especially like even with me, I'm going back to Nigeria this year mm-hmm. and it's been weird because I've avoided going back to Nigeria 
for years because I'm marrying age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Nigerian parents be like, so here is a fine boy from church. Arranged marriage. Trying to, trying to hook it up. <laughs> With somebody you might never see again. Um, <laughs> you know? And it's just, it's very awkward because, you know, like, we're I'm Americanized and being here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we get used to mm -hmm. the tenders and the... And the swipe right. The swipe, swipe right. We have too many options. We have we have the Insta DMs now. Um, yeah, we have, we have way too many options. But the one thing I will say is um, I don't have to go to Haiti to get that. You okay. Know? Uh, I have an older brother who has a career, like okay. myself. But, you know, a career for a man and a career for a woman is two, two different, different things. things. Completely. So he's allowed to have his career. He can come home. Mm -hmm. He'll be playing his video games, watching his ballers and mm -hmm. his Game of Thrones. Okay. And that, I can't have the same life. I can't just come home and watch TV no, and no, catch up on my shows. No, you and, yeah, I have a family. Yeah. I have a, I have a family to raise and everything else. So, you know, he's definitely three kids in. We're about the same age. He has a wonderful career, and my parents are just like kind of looking like, "What's up? Hey, it's your turn." What's and up, Karen? I was like, "Listen, I gave you guys a wonderful dog. <laughs> I brought, it to, brought into my life seven years ago. She's about the same age. You better start getting her some gifts, right? Um, I better start getting some Mother's Day cards, right? And that's really. I'm like, when it happens, it happens. I'm not in a. I'm not in a place to rush it. Yeah. I really like. I believe whatever I envision for myself, and I envision the. I don't want to say the happily ever after, but yes, the happily yeah. ever after. I don't see myself, you know, people say you got to, um, you, you got to like kind of date down, dumb down. I've done that oh, for wait, a while. That, like the whole thing that's right now is where it's like you got to date like an ugly man. Or you have to date is, this or whatever. Otherwise he, he like, going to feel too cute and leave you, something or, like or that. Or not even that. They just feel like with, with women, you know, um, like my, people say my lifestyle looks very masculine. It, it comes off Because like, you be out? Like just... Because, uh, granted, I you know, like, I manage a lot of hip-hop acts. Yeah, 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 And then it's like I have the same thing the guys have, but I'm like, women have this, too, from the, like, they look at material possessions. Mm -hmm. I don't let necessarily think that defines me. Those are just... Those are just stuff that she wants. That's stuff that I worked hard for. 100%. You know? And and they look at it like, you know, oh, you know, they feel a little bit insecure, or, or you make them feel a way. I'm like, well, that's probably not the guy for me. It's not even that, but why would you want to dumb yourself down for somebody? You know, I've... I've been through that phase. I don't know. You know, like I've I've done it, and it's not something that I'm necessarily proud of. I'm content. Yeah. And I'm happy where I am in my life, and I I just look at it now like I have some some great quality friendships. I think when I weeded out a lot of the unnecessary, mm -hmm. it gave room for the right people to enter my life. That's right. And before coming into Los Angeles, I was searching so much for I Los Angeles you can lose yourself very fast 100% I was searching for wrong friendships wrong relationships wrong business ties and now I'm so content with who I am I have the, I have great quality friends I have people that I care about I have someone that I can I can who ask about my day who generally cares about me mm -hmm. and not my not necessarily the business they care about Karen and not the business of the, the brand of Karen Civil and who yeah, you yeah, yeah. met with and who you this just how to better myself. No, but that's real. So then mm -hmm. I have a question for you because mm -hmm. I run into this issue mm -hmm. in being because most of the time when we enter a room we're like one of one of two women in the room. This is and, true. And then the other one is normally like the girlfriend or something and mm -hmm. like we're the only one that's like in there working. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um. I run into this issue where if I am not socially available, meaning like I'm not available for them to talk to me any kind of way, it's, it's it becomes one of those things where mm, I don't know if I want her in yes. the room. It, it, it gets, does, she, she, does she got a man? She acting kind of funny. Like, no, it, it gets to a point where it's just like they feel like you're supposed to be this. Um, you know, I'm very business oriented. 100%. They feel like you're supposed to be this, oh my God, da 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 da. Like falling the, all over. Yeah, room. like, no, that's not what I do. And I'm just it, trying to secure a bag. What's yeah, up? it's like I come here to work the same way you'll treat my male counterpart, you're going to treat me. Right. Like, for example, uh, a couple weeks ago, I had um, a booking came in through my management. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this feels a little sketch, but you know, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I do it and I go, and they're like, and these, these particular people are like, yeah, are you good? You're not talking to us? I was like, I'm fine. Like, I'm engaged. I'm talking to people. I'm this. I was like, I'm not quite sure what you thought I was going to be or who you thought I was. Right. You know, people take your quietness, the snobbiness. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very to myself, you know, and people will take that like, like, I come here on a business setting. I'm not about to be standing on the table 
trying to jumping up and down. Yeah, with the like, they think because you're on social media, oh, everything I do is on Snapchat and on this and on. That's not, not my really. life. That's not what I do. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't really even like it's curated content is what you're looking at. You're right. really not seeing anything that I do. Like you. You've been out with me. You yeah. saw how I go to vet, get the picture. Yeah, we secure take, the we picture. Take, we secure, yeah, we, yeah, we like secure the up. picture. Yes, yeah, set up the photo. <laughs> set up the photo, and then we save the content when we get to it, and then we go have a good time. And but then the phone doesn't come out. But you know what? That's also like a safety thing too, because I actually mm-hmm. have a friend mm-hmm. who had a stalker mm-hmm. just off of social media. It gets it gets very it it gets very like crazy because it's like I'll be in traffic and somebody will tweet me like, "Oh, I'm next to you on the 10. Somebody followed me one time. I drove from Vegas to L.A. Mm-hmm. And the person wrote on Instagram was like, oh, you were so rude on the highway. I was following you for like two miles and you didn't speak. I was but like, wait, 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 wait. You was following me for two miles? I was like, I was because I was driving and I didn't even realize. And it was so scary because they left the comment like you didn't speak to me. I was like, was I supposed oh. to pull over? Hold, what? It'll be the most. I was at the supermarket and this girl's like, oh, I'm a big fan. I said, hi, nice to meet you. I'm just trying to cook my meal. Uh-huh. For me and Faith. Right. And and she wanted me to, like, listen to her business marketing. I said, it's after hours. I'm just trying to get some Xanaram. I'm just trying to get this rice up in here and some broccoli to go home. I said, I didn't really come for... You know how you... I said, I got on the... I got on the... Not even the outside house shoes. I got on the house shoes. You got got your in-house slides. Yeah. I got you. I was like, this is... This is not what I'm really trying... I was like, I don't even... I got the little basket. This was the run in and out. Like... (laughs) The handheld back. Yeah. Like, this is the in and out. And, I, and and it's just like, you know, sometimes people just assume. But again, I try to remember, you know, certain people are, are the reason I'm in the position that I am in. Mm-hmm. I try to be as nice and polite as possible. But then, you know, you're always going to encounter like those, people, yeah, those men or certain people who just like who feel, just feel very entitled. 100%. When, you, when you go to things, you're like, hey, how can you not talking? How you not? I'm good. I'm content. The show's mm-hmm. not about me. I'm here. Yeah. You know, I'm having a good time. I'm fine. I don't know if, you know, they look at other influencers and other people and think I'm supposed to do this and jump all over the place. I don't, that's not yeah. who I am. That's not who Karen Civil is. The relationship, you know, then they'll look at the relationship I have with the talent that I work with, like mm-hmm. a Nipsey Hustle YG, these are people I've been six years in. Mm-hmm. You're not going to come in a, a day fresh thinking that you're going to get the relationship that the I have with way. Nipsey 100%. the same way. No, and I'm, and you know what? I am very guarded. There's nothing wrong with that because now when you get into a place where you don't know if people are using you because they want a feature from from YG or mm-hmm. they want to date Little Wayne or they want to like from Nicki Minaj, you don't know because yeah. like my Rolodex is full. So I, I, I have to be precautious. 100%. Um, it's weird because it just made me think something you said just made me think of this one time having a conversation with LL and he said, the moment I leave my house, I realize I have to put it on. Like I have to put on the LL Cool J face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because I recognize that anybody that I meet, um, if they're meeting me for the first time, they're probably part of the reason why I'm here. Then he also went on to say, though, he's like, but I have my days because on days where I don't want to be bothered, I don't leave my house. Um, he's LL Cool J, so he has that luxury. I be having to leave my house on days when I don't feel like it. Yeah, so. I, I don't. And and I have to deal with the fact that, you know, I've I've had a battle with depression. Yeah. I have anxiety attacks. Mm-hmm. I had one the other day and it's just I'm human. I'm human. That's just what it is. You know, I granted there there are times I don't want to leave my house, but I have to, like you said. So, you know, I'm not fortunate to be there. I want to have that same mindset as LL and yeah. hey, how you doing? And keep it on. I can't. I don't have I, I don't have that luxury. Yeah, the people who know me know me. Mm-hmm. Like back, you know me. Yeah, we can yeah, have yeah. the key key and the yeah. things and you know, people are like Karen's so serious. You'd be like, What? They'd be like, you, no, must, I'll be you like, don't know her then. You then. don't know Karen. Yeah. Karen Ratchet. <laughs> yeah, like we joke, we have a good time. Karen we Ratchet. like Yeah, so she they be don't turning up. So they don't really like they don't really home, know. Though. Yeah. They at don't home, really though. know. Like when you're with yeah. surrounded by good company, you know people have your best interests. Yeah. That's when you're your most comfortable. But that's you know, like but that's just one of those things in being able to distinguish the like the church and state between mm-hmm. being a business professional and just being a personality. Mm-hmm. Cause I know you and I we always talk about it. We talk about curating our content and mm-hmm. making sure our images align with what it is that we're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. I feel and this is going to sound so strange because, like, mm-hmm. I'm in the business of helping people with social. Yeah. I feel as though social has made it way too accessible for people who 
aren't business people to run businesses. Oh, definitely. We are in the day of age of people who are curating, who do nothing but curate content all day. Who do nothing. And you're like, what do you do? Yeah, you know, it's just like, now before when I used to get the what do you do, I'm like, oh my God, don't put me in the same category as this certain people because I actually do something. Now it's to the point, it's just, it's now it's just how many, you know, how How many many celebrities, not even, how many celebrities I could take pictures with, how many parties I can invite invite it to, how many like, Cause you know you could just step over and step on the carpet and just yeah, take a picture yeah, on your camera phone now. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And how many? Um, let me post a slow flat tummy tea. Let me do this. But you know, it's I can't. I I can see it, mm-hmm. but I can't let it. You know, I'm always gonna make sure I separate myself from from what everybody else is doing. If they're going to the left, I'm going to the right. If they're going to the right, I'm going to the left. I'm always gonna make sure that my brand stands out and people know that you're getting something of substance because a lot of things we see now, they only last 10 minutes. Yeah. It's just like, this is for the time being. So I just know I'm here for the longevity. I can I can recreate myself. You can see me from, you can see me on, on Crenshaw and Slauson and then you can see me at the White House. Yeah. So it's just, I'm not gonna put a label or a filter on myself and just be this way and be thing. I'm, I'm learning to be comfortable within my skin and just understanding the place that I'm in and I'm allowing my audience to grow into that place too where it's just like, listen, man, she's she's comfortable with who she is. One, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. I could hang with Hillary one day. The next day I'm playing tic-tac-toe with Nip. Then it's just like I'm working out trying to, you know, I'm not that size two. So mm-hmm. it's like f- figuring out like my body image, how I look, and just the beauty aspect and everything else that comes with it. And I just want people to, to see me and not go, oh, my God, she's girl next door like Mm -hmm. i relate to her yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. no i hear that i have a question Mm -hmm. because you mentioned flat tummy tea Mm -hmm. and i feel like that is the most atrocious brand on instagram i get it it's a check because i know what the checks look like no you know that's all it's all one company yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all one company sneaky vault the new lash thing it's all the same it's all the same company the bra the little cleavage yeah the sneaky yeah same same company all of that i get it it's a check and i try to like I, at the beginning, I called myself, I did one of those. And I was like, Karen, what are you doing? You don't even wear this. Mm -hmm. It was for a waist trainer. And I was like, I don't even wear this. So what are you doing, Karen? So I don't, I don't necessarily, that's not, that's not my brand. That's not what I want to push. You know, I do drink green tea, you know. But you're not drinking flat tummy tea. Yeah, I'm not drinking flat tummy tea. There are days my stomach isn't flat. There are days it is. It depends on how much I ate. Yeah, it, it dep- <laughs> and then you know you got your cycle for the women. I'm sorry not to get crazy, but you have your cycle. You have the things you go through, and then if if I was sad the day before, best believe I had some um I had some some pizza. Oh, a piece of still your jam. Yeah, and and <laughs> Oreos is on my vegan list, and I will have I will eat a whole thing of Oreos. You know, it's so funny just in talking about vegan. I was vegan for three years. I don't know if you remember this. I was like really like vegan, mm-hmm. right? I was so unhealthy as a vegan because I was like, yeah, no, I could eat Oreos all day. I'm like, good. This is vegan. It's on my list. I did it. I did it for two years, and I was I felt. When I say I looked so incredible, mm-hmm. but my equilibrium is off mentally, I was... Because you were getting mm-hmm. dizzy spells. Yeah. Like, I remember I got up one day to use the bathroom, and the next thing I know, I was just on the... Like, I was falling, but I couldn't... Like, I could not stop myself. And then I hit my head, and my head bounced up, and it hit again. And I just had to... Like, I just kept telling myself, I was like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell? Like... Like, I'm trying to, like, what is happening? Is this real? And I kept telling myself, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Yeah. I went to the hospital. And they basically was like, uh, you need to eat meat. Like, yeah. basically, and it's just, I went through the phase of, like, I lost, I lost, like, over 30 pounds. I Like, I definitely gained it back. But I'm comfortable with where I where am. Right now. So I'm just trying to find the balance of eating healthy, being thing, being, like, being comfortable with who Karen is. I'm mm. not a size two. So yeah. it's just for a long time, like in high school, I was a size zero. Oh, girl. So I tried to like, I'm thinking to... I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that, whatever. No, I'm I'm in the six, eight category. It's not a bad thing, Karen. You're comfortable who you are. Yeah. And I said, now I'm just going to make, you know, I, I started more on the, you know, the clothing and the underwear stuff. I'm making, I'm making um stuff for for the skinny to the girls with the with the big breast and the mm-hmm. hips and the you know these these unisex sweats that I have on with with school uh 
shameless design plug. a scooter fly. Yes. Shameless plug. So shameless plug. It's just <laughs> it's all about just finding stuff that's comfortable for everybody and just every size that hugs your body and makes you feel good. No, but that's real. Um, I brought up the vegan thing because I remember when I went vegan, um, I was very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And then um, I wound up going to the doctor and they told me I was anemic. That mm-hmm. if I didn't start... Um, diversifying my food intake that I would actually need a transfusion. I actually got one. Girl, look, I was, so it was very scary. Uh-huh. And then I wound up, I tried eating meat for a little bit, but then that made me sick. So then I went vegetarian. So I do like the salmon yeah. and all of that now. Yeah. Um, But in figuring that out and then in seeing like the trend right now, which is like, what the health? Yeah, people just watch the, oh my God, I'm going vegan. Did but, you see what the health? What the... I'm like, okay, but when I was talking about it two years ago, no one he wasn't, cared. He wasn't rocking with yeah, it. Yeah, but now, you know, that's, That's you know, like the thing. That's like the jam. I mean, circle back around Christmas. Actually, circle back <laughs> Thanksgiving, around Thanksgiving. When that that's turkey what I was going to say. When that turkey and, and moms are making yams and collard greens and all that other and stuff, because I don't eat soul food, but, like, all that stuff comes up. I'm just going to look at everybody to my left and to the right. I'm going to be like, are we watching this What the Health documentary again? Or sure. we're gonna produ- are, we, are we watching Soul Food this season, <laughs> like today? Because yeah. it's just, you know, it, it's at the moment. But if that's what helps people, Yo, like... I'm not, I'm not even not... If that's what helps someone eat healthy or discover that they need to eat healthy, more power to you. Yeah. Um, I just consider it like... I'm okay. Not that I'm a conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. However, I just be feeling like some things are just a little too coincidental. Yeah. Do you remember those commercials where it was like, high fructose corn syrup isn't bad for you? Yeah. Right? At the the time those ads were running, like the corn uh, department was the agricultural, like Mm -hmm. the people who develop corn weren't making a lot of money because people were getting really healthy. Yeah. So that you start seeing those commercials all of a sudden. People are like, hey, maybe... High fructose corn syrup yeah, isn't bad. It's not really bad. I'm like, so like right now, I feel like the farmers little need need a little boost. You know, tofu yeah. factories need a little boost. boost. It's like, just what's up? it's 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 still again. It's just it's it's what works for you. Yeah. You know, it's just I'm I'm making a more conscious decision of watching what I eat, knowing what I'm intaking in my body, mm-hmm. reading the back of packages before because you know you just got what was popular yeah. let me get a craft cheese let me get a this because you know it's just name brand food Sargento. name brand food yeah like let me just ooh journal uh-huh. pizza and everything else now you're the just Giorno like you know was trash too that's now and i and and it was a couple years ago i learned that craft cheese isn't even cheese no not it's to, not not to discredit anyone on this whole thing but it's just mm-hmm. you learn a whole bunch and it's like finding new supermarkets mm-hmm. new juices like i thought sunny delight was the best thing in the world and nah, yeah, so it's now, not even juice. Yeah, but now all I drink before I hated water. Mm-hmm. Now all I drink is water. Yeah. So people come over. I'd be like, "Would you like water?" They'd be like, "Yeah." I'd be like, "Well, I have a variety of options for you to choose." I'll be, be pulling out the alkaline. Yeah, but no, that's I'll give. I'm like, I have this, I have this, and they're like, um, um, yeah. Which I was like, no, it's not whichever. Which one would you like? An alkaline? Would you like a black water? Would you like? I was like the preference: cold, room temperature. Right, right, and right. Like, yeah. Do you have apple juice? Not no, in this house. No. Yeah, this is all you got. You know, mix your honey with some water. I'm like, I don't have the only thing you're chasing this with is water. That's real. That's real though. That's how you get. Uh, I mean, like at least that's how you maintain your lifestyle. That's how I maintain my eating. Um, simply because I just don't have a chunk of my house. Yeah, I, I just try to just 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 stay away from it more than more than everything and just just like just like okay Karen if you are not gonna have time to get a proper meal or whatever the case may be just make sure it's something nutritious and can hold me over for sure Mm -hmm. so what is the most outrageous marketing campaign and by outrageous I mean like outrageously bad marketing campaign that you've seen in the last five years oh I like how we stopped racism and police brutality with the Pepsi can all it took was a was a Pepsi. I was like, damn, Kylie, where's the Pepsi at? Yeah, I got pulled over. I wanted to be like, hey, you want a Pepsi? <laughs> <laughs> you still gave me a ticket, but I was I was gonna say, hey, you want a cold one? Yeah. Um I mean, that was that was bad. How about let's talk about some some ones that I actually like. I thought Which was ones did you like? great. I love remember when we had the the power outage during the Super Bowl? Yeah. Oreo mm-hmm. and that 10, five minute span, whatever. Oreo came back and was like, you could dunk in the dark. And they had the Oreo. Like, I remember that. That was insane. I said, what? They came up with a marketing plan. Why in the middle of the dark. In the middle of the dark. I thought that was great. I loved the Amazon one um, with the, the, um, 
the two men who were both it was like a priest mm-hmm. and oh it was a priest and, and like a Sikh and a reverend yes yeah and, and it's like they both had knee problems uh-huh. and then they both got each other a, a brace for their knees so they both can pray in their particular in their particular fashions I thought that was so, super dope yes um, I and, thought that was amazing and now I like order because Amazon just made me a fan mm-hmm. I went and signed up for Amazon Prime I get everything off of Amazon Amazon Prime is so worth it like I get every that commercial brought me to tears because it just it just showed like we can come together because yeah. I follow I follow the Muslim prayer uh, guidelines mm-hmm. throughout my day and it's just like I just I just felt connected to that commercial yeah. and I'm like it's the little things and I just felt like they did an incredible job with that. So, but I feel um, like Amazon because they're such a global thing mm-hmm. and they they know that like hey predominantly are the people who who partake from us, who purchase through us, yeah. are of different cultures, we got to make sure we hit everybody. Body. Yeah, and everyone feels included. Amazon's huge in the UK. Yeah. Super they, huge. They make sure everyone's included, and mm-hmm. and I literally I literally love that. So it's like I'll look for the most random things, and I can find it on Amazon. You know what my favorite campaign is? I was just thinking of this. Mm-hmm. As of late, and I, I'm pretty sure it's Donda who ran it, but the Pretty Girls Like Trap Music campaign. Well, no, that definitely wasn't Donda. It wasn't Donda. Who that was, it? was um, that was Two Chains and his manager Tech. I loved everything about that. I thought it was so genius. I love it was so authentic to him. Yes, and and it was worth it. Even how he partnered with Spotify to make the playlist, yes, to do the house, how, just just the house, the I, car. I got a I got a pink dog house and a little Cadillac for my dog. Okay. I didn't I didn't post a picture yet, but I I sent it's it coming. to I sent it to his manager. I was like, look. My dog loves because somebody posted something similar, yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, look, my dog loves it too." But yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. I just love what he did. He, he like brought the community together, and he's doing it his way. Mm-hmm. And even just, you know, his leg was broken, and he still made it work. Like he went on a tour wheelchair, and a wheelchair and everything, and everything. Yeah, I, I think my favorite aspect of that campaign was after they rolled out the album, they took the house and made it an AIDS and HIV testing center. He did that. He made it a church. Yeah, like. He just made sure it was he part made of the, the community. Pillar, and, yeah. And, and I appreciated that so much because because of his actions and like the actions of a 21 Savage during the rollout, you got big companies like Spotify moving to Atlanta. Yeah. And I think that's so genius. Go, yeah. And they just realize the importance of the culture and what's happening. And here. like being and coming to us because before yeah. it was like we have to go to them. We have now to go to New York. Yeah. Right. You have to go to New York. You have to go to L.A. And it's like, no. They're going to come to us. They're going to advertise here. They're going to be a part of this community. They're going to spend money here. And and I like that. And he's having conversations mm-hmm. where, you know, people are like, what? They're having church in the trap? I'm like, they're going to church. You can have church anywhere. You can yeah. praise God anywhere that's comfortable to you. And the same way it's like partnering with, I think it was like AHF or whoever he partnered with for mm-hmm. that. And to do the testing centers, it's like it's such a faux pas thing. I'm like, why, why not? is not why is knowing your status a bad thing? So it's like he's having the conversations mm-hmm. people really don't want to have. And he he just he just made like being conscious of of just your health, your mentality, just just your spiritual behavior. He made it cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, aside from two chains, who else? Because two chains is doing that. Nipsey's pushing hard on the business, right? Mm-hmm. Like from his move with cryptocurrency mm-hmm. to the store on Crenshaw. Destination Crenshaw. Destination Crenshaw, yeah. making Crenshaw a tourist location. He's absolutely killing it on yeah. that front. Who else is moving in those lines? Because these guys, 2 Chains and Nipsey are two people who I think, I'm like, these guys came in kind of like Diddy with the vision. Like, mm-hmm. hip-hop is the springboard, but we got to do some, like, real-life community stuff. Like, we have to activate our community. Community. Um, I definitely think who, he goes really unnoticed. LL Cool J does a lot in his community. He does. It's just because he's older and he may not have the younger generation, but just just the fact that he has such a, a prime show on Spike TV mm-hmm. and he goes back to Queens constantly. Just what he's doing is incredible. Um, who else is there? You know, I I will have to say they Q before he passed. May he rest in soul. God rest his soul. Mm-hmm. He was doing a lot from World Star Hip Hop. He, he was doing a lot for the community, like just for Queens and in Los Angeles. And I'm not sure where it lives now, what's happening or how they're moving forward. But he was doing a lot. Because I know prior to me moving to L.A., they had just moved their offices to Phoenix, to mm-hmm. Scottsdale. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of like lost track of that. 
Mm-hmm. But like I, I kind of always wondered like now that he's no longer there, his business partner just carries on his legacy in both the philanthrop- philanthropic and like yeah. business or like. See, I don't, I don't know, but I just know he was just so like he just was, backpacks and yeah. this and that, and he was just out doing a lot for his community. But um, Two Chains is doing incredible. LL, Nipsey. Um, Ooh, I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm overlooking anyone. It's I'm just, sure there's somebody yeah. we're, we're, we're thinking of, but we can't remember. Yeah, there's today. more. There's always the Jay Z's. The Jay Z's. You know, t- well, you know what? Trade the Truth. Trade the Truth deserves an award. Yeah, Trade the you know, Truth. And you I know, will give it to Trade the Truth. This man is just, he is for Houston. He's been consistent and, for years. years. This isn't new. Yeah, this is not new at all like with, what he, his, with his Trade the Truth weekend, his day, mm-hmm. and everything he does. And I don't, I don't particularly know the whole back end story of what happened. Um, with radio and however he's treated, mm-hmm. I just think like he literally does a lot for his community. He does a lot. He does he, a lot. He's one of those people who has taken Houston and put Houston on his back. Yes. And it's so weird because like I would I want to say like in my earlier days of marketing, I would look at someone like Trey because I see Trey every year when I go to South by, yeah. and I'm like, you have such a huge movement. Why don't you leave Houston? But then like moments like this where. Um, you know, the city's kind of like crumbling and they need a champion. That's what makes him or people like him effective. Yeah, you know, I just I just feel like Houston is his his kind of like support, yeah. you know, and he can kind of like, which, which he's done, he's done shows all over the place and everything mm-hmm. else. He's an icon in this community. I feel like and that's how Atlanta embraces Kevin Gates, though. Even though Kevin yeah. Gates is in jail. yeah. Um, that's definitely how Atlanta embraces Kevin Gates. The same. And he is just, Trey is just that there. It doesn't matter who comes, who's new, who's whatever. Mm-hmm. You just always will look for him. He's always down on the ground making sure things are done. That makes sense. Okay, so if you had to list three things that you haven't accomplished yet, but you would like to within the next year, what would they be? Um, finish my second book. Uh, something with TV programming, um, and a better workout regimen. Touching on TV programming, because we had a discussion about Mona earlier mm-hmm. and how people give her a bad rap just based on. I mean, like Mona's to me, it's like Mona's like a hit or miss. If you, I have a relationship with her. Yeah, my relationship with her, I think she's an incredible person. She's. I agree. She has. Um, she has nominated me for awards within the Haitian community. She does a lot. Yeah, and you know. She's not forcing anyone to do anything on TV. She gives you an opportunity. And that has always been my standpoint. Yeah, like she gives you an opportunity to be on her platform, however you choose to stay on it. it. To use it to get your quote unquote 15 minutes of fame, that's Mm -hmm. on you. Cardi used it. She came in and was X Y Z, and she turned into she, a rapper. Exactly. So there, people. K Michelle used it. She was. She, she came on she, as a victim, mm-hmm. and then she springboarded into an R&B singer. Yeah, she's global R- now. To a, a global superstar. 100%. I don't even want to say an R&B. So she turned herself into a global superstar yeah. and a businesswoman. And actually, I'll take that to an entrepreneur because she's Jack Daniels or businesses and everything yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So it's however you want to use the platform. If you want to throw drinks at each other every day. Like, Mona's not making you do anything. Right. So, you know, and and she's changing her programming, too, because I know she's working on the escape um, thing mm-hmm. and other things. But, you know, that's what we people tune in. Yeah. You know, it's it's Love and Hip Hop franchise. Is, I, I, I'm hearing their numbers are higher than Kardashian show and everything they are. else. That's what people tune into. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. It's a guilty pleasure for me. I 100% watch it. I partake. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing has been that I think so often in the conversation I was having, people were like, man, why would Mona da 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 And my response was, but how are you as a grown woman going to tell other grown people how to behave? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, she's like, here's this platform. Do with it, like, what you want. People want to. Like, that's that's what they want to do. if you want to wild do, out. Yeah, then, it's the same way people wild out with their Twitter or their Instagram or whatever. You know, people, they, people this, die in these streets for tweets. Yeah, the, people are just happen to be doing it for social media. So it's just, or, well, they happen to be doing it on TV. Some yeah. people do it for social media. Some people do it for whatever. It's different platforms and different levels. Yeah. So Would you ever do reality TV? Um, I mean, I've, I've been asked to, but I'm not at a place where um, I'm comfortable to share everything. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I taped some scenes with uh, uh, Lola Monroe for 
her new show that mm-hmm. she's on with, I believe it's with E. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was just conversation. I get to be myself. Yeah, if yeah, I get yeah. to be myself, yeah, f- yeah, of course. But I'm not in a place where I'm not going to go on TV and argue with you and everything else because I have to think about five years from now, six years from now, what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. What, how what will could that be reflect next on me? Yeah, how will it re- reflect on me? Because, you know, even being able to work with the Hillary administration and, and campaign, things that I said on Twitter were brought back up. I you know remember. what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's just, that's when you're early on. Now think if I'm, I'm, I'm acting a fool and on TV. Then, it's like, then yeah, there's no living that down. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not for a convert. I'm not for arguing back and forth from Jersey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Teresa told you we flip tables, baby. <laughs> so we get right to it. So it's just like, I'm not, I don't, I don't really want to be that person. I, I, I you know, I don't, I want to turn into somebody else. So That's I'm going to pass on that. Or if it's reality in my way, like you see shows like, like Lenny S with signs. I love that show. I want, you know what? I'm going to be real with you. I mm-hmm. love Lenny. I love Ross. However, I feel like for it to be a real depiction of our industry, mm-hmm. That show should have been all women. You think? Yeah. No, I necessarily, I, I like it. Sometimes I can't, Ross is very funny when he makes fun of their clothes and he's super in the girl's face. He's super flirty. It's very interesting. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm about to buy you everything. You know, I'm going to be real with and you. And then with the guys, he's like, what's that? What kind of fur is that? <laughs> like, he extra mean to them. Yeah, you know what it is. He, mm-hmm. I, I first realized that the way he treats men and women are different when he did Martha's potluck, Martha and Snoop's potluck. Mm-hmm. He was all over Martha. Mm-hmm. And then Snoop would say something and Ross would be like, all right. And then he'd go back, so what up, Martha? Have you ever been on a boat? And Martha's like, I got a yacht. Like, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know, the way he treats men and women is different. But I, the re- reason why I'm saying it should have mm-hmm. been on women, I'm not talking about contestants. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, go get Erica um, Pittman from Diddy's team. Mm-hmm. Put her. Go get either you or somebody else. Throw them down. Three coaches. Because I feel like that's more reflective. Because behind... I actually uh, tried out for that show, but it didn't. Yeah. Because it was in Atlanta. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't work. It didn't. It didn't the course didn't work. But, I mean, I like the dynamics for what it is. It's mm-hmm. cool TV. Whatever the case may be. Lenny works on a lot of great projects. Lenny's on everything. Yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it, it it's just like there's there's different versions of of like what reality TV is. We see what works. There's mm-hmm. shows that are positive that don't come back on TV. Right. You know, so, you know, as much as people are like, oh, Mona's feeding this, and you're eating it. You yeah. know, it's just M- McDonald's is not going out of business because it has customers. This is know? true. Same thing with, oh, you know, how people complain about the corner stores and the bodegas. They don't have this and that. And duh, 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 like, But that's why Whole Foods popped up around the corner because you yeah. wasn't buying shit from the bodega. Yeah, so it's just like, she, she feeds, she, you know, she she reaches out to the masses of who wants it. Mm-hmm. And, and her ratings are spiking up. They're not going down. So obviously you're tuning in to it. So I think probably the biggest way to kind of contest the way people feel about Mona would be if there were more diverse views of black women. Black I think people. they are. And I, I think more than in ever. In reality scale? Well, to me, on television, period, okay. we are in a place where it feels it feels great. I could watch myself on Monday, Tuesday. Before, we only had, like, one day. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could get a Friday or a Sunday. We have yeah, Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even Sunday. So we have programming. We have Blackish. Mm-hmm. We have Empire. Mm-hmm. We have Star. We have Being Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. Like... Now even like um, ballers, they added a female black character who's yeah. not a girlfriend. Right. So who's a who? She's the the head chick in charge. So there's yeah. so there's so much different programming, so many places that we are now included mm-hmm. that I feel really good. Like I pick and choose what I want to watch, and and it, it that's really what it is. It's like so many people complain. I'm like more than ever. You should not be complaining about music or television because, because it's you based on control. Demand. Yeah, you control the programming. Mm-hmm. You do not have to sit and watch a VH1, a E, or this or that. We have on demand. Mm-hmm. You can watch whatever you want to watch. You control your programming. You don't want to listen to a song. Turn on your iTunes. Turn on your Spotify. Listen to what you control. What you take in. Right. So that's why I don't. I don't care to hear about how people don't like Mona. I'm like, you don't have to know who she is. Mm-hmm. You don't have to know nothing about her program. You don't have to watch that hour. You choose to, so don't complain about it. 100%. So I have a question. In mm-hmm. talking about streaming, what do you think comes next? Because, like, Ooh. right now, because I'm, like, because I'm, like, streaming just changed the game for music for the first time in, like, what, four or five years is profitable? I think um, the way we stream, soon we're not even going to have to go to movies. 
I feel I don't like, feel like we're gonna have to go to movies. I feel like you're gonna be able to stream your movie at home. Like the day it comes out, maybe for a week, you'll be able to watch it from home some way. Mm-hmm. And also concerts. Like you'll be able to stream, say the concert mm-hmm. in in your hometown is sold out or whatever, you'll be able to like kind of like a pay per view. Yeah. You'll be able to watch the concert from home. Isn't that what we already do with title? Yeah, but say like from an aspect of okay, scissors at the Staples Center today. Mm-hmm. I can watch it from my phone right now. It's not I can watch it a couple months from now after yeah, they yeah, yeah. edit it and put it together. I'm watching it as it's happening right now. Okay. So I have the option of going to uh the Staples Center and seeing her perform, or mm-hmm. I can watch it on my phone. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Um I think we're gonna go so far as get like personal holograms. Remember, mm-hmm. you ever watch the Jetsons? Mm-hmm. And the joints we popping up, we gonna have the personal holograms, and we just gonna be seeing everything live. I I would love that. Happy birthday! Hey, Happy hey, birthday. hey what's Happy up? Birthday. I think the I would on- love a hologram. I think the only thing that scares me with the way technology is advancing is I don't think we need artificial intelligence quite yet. Um, cause I don't know if you saw that thing with like Facebook, they were making robots, but then the robots started speaking their own language and they had to cut the machines off. That's about to be scary, man. I feel like that's iRobot about to happen. Like in no, real life. I, I forget this movie I was watching. I don't even want to talk about it. It's just, it just, I was like, Oh my God, I gotta go to sleep. I gotta go to sleep. It just, it just was just too much. It was mm-hmm. just like, it just, just robots and everything were controlling. It was like half human, half robot. It, it just was too much. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm cool. I'm just cool with the humans. No, that's real. So I have a question. So mm-hmm. what made you decide? I know you earlier we were talking about like eating habits, exercise mm-hmm. and loving yourself. What made you decide to partner with Ithaca and do that line? Um, I was actually actually being funny because <laughs> uh, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and she was just like she was going through my DMs and she was like, damn, there's a lot of people in your DMs. And I was like, yeah, you know, you know, people don't. No offense, they think the women like us don't mm. can't pull a guy or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, we can. I was like, yeah, I was like, we just don't showboat it like the national. I'm like, yeah, I was like, all these guys want to get in my underwears, and I was like, I'm about to make some underwears, <laughs> and we were just, it was just like a joke. Yeah. But then you know, like I wear Ithaca faithfully, yeah, 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 like yeah. I wear their their like Ithaca faithfully, so it's just it's just something that that naturally happened, and I'm like, listen, I have curves. I was skinny, but I have curves. I have a body. You know, I want girls to feel good, like the boxer briefs, and mm-hmm. and like it's something you can you can just put your tights on, go run some errands, put on with your shoes, mm-hmm. um, you know, go go to the gym, do your yoga. It's all around like it's an all around practical outfit, and it's mm-hmm. not super expensive, and it's inexpensive, and it's just something that sits between the price point of like something you can get on Amazon and Target, mm-hmm. and so it's like athleisure. Yeah, athleisure wear. Okay, and. It's you know it's something I wanted to get into because I'm I I I love you know I'm so we I, get are we getting a, a Karen Civil boutique soon? You know maybe I got this I got the sneaker, um yeah. I got the sneaker with K Swiss I got the underwear and it's just we're gonna continue to grow and keep it going and it's just you know the, the whole thing is brand is to have your own items mm-hmm. you know it's just whenever you feel like something's, you, you know, you put in the market what's missing. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm going to continue to do is just put put what's out there, what's missing. And, you know, I remember as an influencer, it's like, oh, can I park, can I wear your sneaker? Can I do this? And da, da, da. Now it's just I want to have my own thing. That's real. So, you know, I want to have my own brand. I want to have my, but my I, own entity into things and just, just continue to, you know, to build a Karen Civil brand. And, you know, it's, I partner, I, it's great partnering with all these other companies, but, again, it's I need equity. I feel like you were helping pushing their bottom line and it yeah. wasn't necessarily pushing yours because I see somebody like LeVar Ball mm-hmm. and he's doing like the big baller brand mm-hmm. and everyone's like why wouldn't why wouldn't you just sign with Nike because there's a million athletes that are signed to Nike yeah but there's only one big baller brand. brand yeah and he's doing well and it's just like why can't he start his own business the same oh I don't um, you paying for title? Like, why you can't support? Why we why can't, can't support, support one another? Why? Mm-hmm. Why can't you see the business? Why? Why don't we see? Why can't we see black business booming? Yeah, you know, I'm not just saying, oh, because it's black, it's right, but it's yeah. it's he took but a why chance. Can't we support our own. Yeah, stuff. he 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 took a chance, and he he took a chance on his business, on his kids, on his future endeavors, mm-hmm. and he's like, yo, I don't want to settle for five when I could get fifty. Why not? Just 100%. do what works. Do what works for you, and uh-huh. that's and that's exactly what he's doing. And that's what I'm doing for me. But that's real. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if there's one piece of advice that you could give 
because I, I, I get this a lot and I always feel like I never know what to say. The question the people hit me up is like, hey, if you have any advice to just get my business started, I'm trying to do what you do. How do I get started? And I kind of never know what to tell them because no one ever gave me advice. I just started. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's just you know, people come to me like, oh, well, how you do this? I, I just I necessarily started. It, I'm now I tell people I got a master's a doctorate in Google University. Mm-hmm. You can go look things up, figure it out. You know, understanding one thing that's very important is everyone's like, oh, I want a brand. What exactly is the brand? Mm-hmm. Right. What do you sell? Yeah. What do you what, what do is you missing offer? in the market that you feel like you can offer that you're going to be that thing where people you going to build an audience and the audience is going to come to you? What what exactly are you giving us? Mm-hmm. And then it's making sure like it's making sure everything is, you know, unique and and just all aligned properly. Like all your platforms are dimples. Mm-hmm. I noticed that change. I said, yo, she didn't play. She went I'm back at this and that. Mess. Yeah, you just yeah, you just straight dimples. <laughs> yeah. And it's like with me, they're like, oh, what's your Facebook? Karen Civil. What's your Twitter? Karen Civil. What's your thing? Everything is just, I hate when I have to go, this is this, this is this, this is that. When you're starting I'm, I'm out Joe new. I'm the rapper too yeah, on and Twitter. The, and then <laughs> with a the business, they're like, oh, I have, a, I have a Facebook. It's a personal page. I don't want to see pictures of your kids if you're selling me sunglasses, 100%. if you have a sunglass. Keep everything different. Understanding your brand identity mm-hmm. and things like that. Like, oh, I just have Twitter. I don't have, I don't have Facebook. I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have a website. I'm not on, I'm not on Yelp. I'm not on Yahoo pages. I'm not on this. I don't have a LinkedIn. Yeah, I don't. It's all these things. And I'm like, why don't you have it? They just be like, oh, no, I'm just on Instagram. And I'm like, that's not the only business avenue. That's not the mm-hmm. only way people are going to find you. You still got to do the regular way, you know, with the Yelp. You got to think of the people in your community, in your mm-hmm. neighborhood. How are they finding you? Right. You know, so it's it's those little things that people don't think about. But I think, important. I think people right now have ideas, these crazy ideas of grandeur, mm-hmm. and they don't necessarily realize the work that goes into it. No, people don't. You know, they see like, they. I just, I just now... Like in the last year, feel like I've finally come into my success or my own or whatever else. Mm-hmm. When I first moved to LA, people were like, "Why is your place so small?" I was like, well, "It's supposed to ball out and do this mm-hmm. and that." They don't understand the hard work and the sacrifice of. I didn't have a TV for mm-hmm. for a couple of months, eating ramen noodles, sleeping on a couch, you know, having a negative bank account. Yeah, all of those, all of those is just like it's it, it's a part. It's part of the game. Yeah, it's part of the game. And now because the way social media is set up, we only see the success of it all. Mm-hmm. So people just think that's what it is. And I'm like, no, I have my hardships. I have my things. Just because I don't necessarily share it with you, mm-hmm. they're like, man, your life life looks easy for you. I'm like, how? Because you see curated content. I'm a regular person. I cry. I'm emotional. I go through things you know this more than anything because i'll call you and have a conversation be frustrated with you and and well not frustrated with you but like frustrated at a situation so it's like i'm a normal human being i go through things i miss family i miss loved ones you know me being here right understanding as a woman me being here right now is taking away from me being somewhere else so it's like it's like figuring out something's always being sacrificed Mm -hmm. And I always have to sacrifice something every single day. It's weird because Shauna Rhyme said this thing. Because I, I stay, like, any anytime, like, where I am in my career, I'm just, I'm, I've stopped looking around and I'm just focused on myself, ton of vision, right? Yes. And one thing that I saw. NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR. That's what I, I say is, like, <laughs> think of, like, people are like, why do you watch NASCAR? Like, because they're not, they not looking at nobody. No, when they start to, and they start to look at somebody, they drift off the track, hit yeah. the wall, crash into each other, whatever. You have, you're on that fast track and you have to... Yeah. Keep going. I'm like, that's that's what I just want to keep watching. I'll focus on one car and just keep just going keep around, going. Going, around. Keep, keep yeah. going. Keep going. Keep going. So in looking at this interview that Shonda Rhimes did, she said that at any given time of her life, she's where she's being successful in one area, she's failing at the other. No, that's true. And she talks about like mother. She's like, yeah, no, I could be a great mother today, but that means I'm failing as, a, as an executive. It's that to me. It's, it's that sacrifice it's, it's, to do yeah, a business. It's, that, it's, it's a seesaw effect, though. Mm-hmm. When you're high up in one area, you're low in another. Mm-hmm. And and. That's hard for me because today is my niece's first day of school. She's getting ready to go to bed. And I told her I'd call her back in the car, and I didn't call her back. I know she went to bed. And mm-hmm. I know she just wanted to tell me about her day, but then I would have been, I was already late here mm-hmm. because I had to add something else in, but it's trying to make sure I do everything, keep my word as a person, yeah, yeah, yeah. and commit to, you know, f- follow through with everything I have to do. But I did that on a business aspect, but I failed as not today because yeah. I didn't. But tomorrow, 
I wake up, I'm going to reschedule a meeting because I want to talk to her before she goes on her way to school because yeah, I want to yeah. know and, and do the whole thing and, and like, wish her luck and be there yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So it's it's just all those little things. It's yeah. just it's just trying to get as much done as possible and a limited amount of time and to just, you know, I, I it's every, it's every day. I'm just I'm just trying every day to be a better human being, leave this world better than then um, I came into it and just, just every day just, just try to be a better human being. That's real. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Karen. No problem. Thank you for having me. Of course. Bye, y'all.